Call of Duty, this is Judge of the Game 3 4 here, and today I'm here to review about Black Butler. This anime I started to watch after I was done watching Demon Slayer, and I must admit, I found it to be a really interesting anime. It made three seasons a movie, a live action, which I could not get into and I even hated. I barely even seen any of it. Really don't like. Even it has its own manga. But I have heard the manga and the anime are actually really different from each other in many ways, so I'm not really, so I'm not really exactly sure. I do know there's a twin brother in it, but I'm not going to be talking about anything like that. If you want to look up this anime, in this review, I'm going to be talking about the characters and the parts of the story, but I'm not. I'm going to save some things out and everything, it's just if you want to really get into, but don't be spoiled. So let's talk. But, but just let you know, guys, it only really has one season of the anime. But what I mean by that is season two is more of a continuous thing on of the anime. As for season three, season three is like following more of a longer story I heard. So just let you all know, like season one is basically like it has a start to finish thing with the older series. But if you want to like, get a season two out of it, where it continues on the story afterwards, yeah, that's basically what happens. So let's talk about this. This anime takes place in 1985. Well. Technically, that's where I would start with the soul taking. It all starts with C.L. Phantomheim. C.L. Phantomheim is from a rich family and everything, who does business with the queen and everything. His parents are the ones who work and everything. And he is a really happy, young, cheerful boy. But one day, on his birthday, his parents were... He found them dead and everything. His house was burned down, and he was taken and stolen, and put into some type of a cold thing, where basically he begged for help, wearing he met a demon. This demon is known as Sebastian. They form a contract together where it's now on CL's eye. It's an upside down, purple down star and a purple ring and everything. CL puts an eye patch because he can't like revert it back into a normal blue eye looking. This demon is named Sebastian. He is really funny. <laughs> funny. He takes the form of CL's new butler and everything. He's actually really funny in this anime. He loves talking loud at some times when he's being serious. And he takes, and he's actually really good at being one, and he even has a catchphrase, I'm one hell of a butler. They have form a deal, or deal arrangement, where by the time they find the people who killed CL's parents, CL and Sebastian will kill them, and then Sebastian will be able to take and eat CL's soul and everything. That's the whole story part of it, well, the main base. There's more a lot to the story than the BCI. Around this thing, the Queen, uh, this takes place in around the United Kingdom, or basically England. We are basically around this time in Victoria area, which it was honestly a really nice story. They actually do have a lot of history things. They have about the two Prince Lock uh, Tower episode. They even do have Jack the Ripper in it. They also talk about a few other things that were actually based on real history, but try changing up to their style with something like the World Happen thing. It was honestly really interesting. But nonetheless, one of these things were basically CL. It's now two years later and everything. CL and Sebastian have been pretty much been, been pretty much doing missions now, now that CL's parents. He is now the head of the family and he has a blue ring to prove it. But nonetheless, this story, what goes on here, there's about four other servants that do live with them, each with their own backstory. The first one being Temple. He was, if I'm saying that name right, and I apologize if I'm saying it wrong though. Basically, though, he is the formal butler of the CEO of Phantom Heights house, but he stays with them. He doesn't really do anything. He's actually an old man at this point, and pretty much he's been with them since even before CEO was born, I think. But he's been taking care of them, and actually been helping, well, at least a little, sometimes. But it's been Sebastian that's been doing all the work. He's been sitting around the lot drinking tea. Kind of cute. But nonetheless, what goes on with the other three are even more interesting. We have Vinny, who is personally my favorite out of the old, well, out of the human ones. Basically, he's really funny. He's childish, he's only 15 years old, and he's the gardener. But he keeps messing things up, and well, he is really funny, I got to admit. But also, one of the things that makes him really interesting is really strong. Now, I get kind of felt sorry for him with his backstory. Basically, he was actually being experimented on by people, and basically what they were doing was make, injecting him with something that would make him way more stronger than normal humans, even though he doesn't really look like it. He is absolutely really strong, and he does show it off a lot in the anime. And really, it was a lot of fun. I thought it was just used as comedy until we got the chance to know about the backstory, which kind of makes sense, apparently. And basically, he just loves being outside a lot. 
It's really nice. Nonetheless, we have the next one, who is Brad. Brad is basically the cook and everything. He does the same things like when he does messing things up. But he's actually, but he was actually a part of an army, an English army and everything. But was sadly, pretty much completely took in. But sadly, his whole entire army got dead during the war and everything, except for him, because he was the only one smart enough. And Sebastian found him actually offered him as a job as a cook. <laughs> Believe me. Next is Main Ring. Main Ring? Well, Ring May. Whatever Nick. It depends which, how I say it, right? I'm sorry if I'm saying these names along my way. But nonetheless, but she was basically a very good, like, assassin, I believe. She has good eyesight and shooting. And basically, she was actually smart. But when she started wearing these glasses that were given to her by CL Phantomheim, they all pretty much, she pretty much acts childish and everything. And she's really clumsy. She has problems seeing and we all thought she was bad. Turns out with the glasses she was wearing. But nonetheless, basically they all do care about CL Phantomheim a lot. CL Phantomheim also has a, pretty much is engaged to Solon by, it's a basically arranged marriage from two families. Name Elizabeth. Elizabeth is actually really childish, girly. She's basically a twin, twin tail girl, twin tail girl that's really happy all the time. But she does deeply care about Ciel, even felt sorry what she did a long time. She actually broke Ciel's ring when she got mad, but when she realized what she did, she completely felt regretful and she wanted to try and make it up. She really actually does truly care a lot about Ciel, but she really is a lot childish. Ever since what happened to Ciel, Ciel pretty much stopped acting like a childish kid, really happy all the time, and just became more like this calm, focused kid. That's how the story goes. He's also really worried about, like, he's always going to always, like, caring about the Phantom High reputation that has been job and doing. He's also been doing works for the Queen and everything now that his parents are gone. He's the one in charge and everything. Sebastian's been helping him a lot with everything. Been helping him train, with like, learning things and everything. Also, he's been pretty much taking care of Steel, basically, for all this time. Throughout the, throughout the whole entire thing, we eventually get a hell of a hound in a mix, which I'm not going to really tell you how that happened. But it was all really funny and everything. Most of these parts in the way how this anime looks, basically it was a really funny, entertaining thing. Now, besides demons, there's also Grim Reapers, which actually CL does have an aunt named Angelina, who basically, is, I believe, is called Madame Red. Is that what they call her, right? Basically, she's basically known as... She has red hair, red eyes, and pretty much wears red. She has a butler herself, but her butler is a Grim Reaper that ends up killing her. And basically it was real, they were both Jack the Ripper. But it was an interesting and insane hit in them. It was nice how they did things. Now, nonetheless, Jack the Ripper was really cool. Cool the way how they done that. They even did a backstory of why she did all this stuff, and it was actually nice. I did find it entertaining. Now, when the Grim Reaper did kill her named Grinny, or Grin, basically, he or she, he's basically a transvestite, just like, you know. So that's a far she. She was honestly really a really entertaining character. I found her really good. She did kind of make me laugh with some jokes. Especially, I did like how they made Grim Reapers and how they do and everything with reaping souls. Basically, when Grin came along and reaped her CL's on soul, Basically, a big, like, cinematic record came out where basically, like, the old record on tapes, you know, you would find the black that way, like, so parts of it. I found it really interesting that they all just came out, like, they showed the whole their life story of her. That's how I found it really interesting. Now, nonetheless, Grim was eventually taken back by other Grim Reapers because he basically broke the wall and everything. He does eventually come back, and, well, that's a long, long story. But basically, he does actually end up helping CO and everything. With many things. It was kind of interesting. Throughout this, throughout the whole entire season here, they only have 24 episodes, and this is only in the very early ones. They do have another Grim Reaper known as the Undertaker, and another one named William we see in season one. To me, they were all good characters, and I really did find them all funny. William is more the strict one who basically has all this, who is basically the one in charge. The Undertaker is really cool. I mean, he he works at a coffin shop or something, and basically he and basically if you want information on him, you gotta make him laugh, which we don't know how that happens. Now, nonetheless, 
this was honestly how things really go on. Basically, each part of the season one, basically, there's a part in the arc in it where basically they're showing what's going on from going on a mission from By Wars of the Queen, where basically, as you go on, you find out how, how they're all each connected to who murder CL's parents. Eventually, CL, CL and Sebastian did finally found out, found out who it was, and well, I'm really gonna say, but it was actually a really kind of cool twist how they did it. Nonetheless, we got this epic fight scene, and well, at the end, CL basically went in the full demon form that went to the one we killed, and we got pretty much all the Grim Reapers, the servants, all now like working together in the Great Fire of Britain, pretty much now drawing out a big hellhound to unleash. It was honestly really good. At the end of it, basically, see, Sebastian went into full demon form and killed the one who did, and well, this thing was a, just another supernatural being. Not a demon, though. You'll all see if you want to see. Look at it. At the end of season one, we basically know what happens now after that. Sebastian, you get what you want. A deal's a deal. But the way that happens, it is kind of really sad, though. It does kind of look like everyone got a happy ending besides you, know, because in a way, it kind of makes them sad. Granted, he prevents his parents' death, but he's pretty much the last phantom time. And also, what makes it sad is he gave up his own soul. He's never actually going to really see his parents again. That is kind of what makes it a sad ending, but everyone else gets to continue to live on. I did feel like those CL basically gave up everything for a lot of their others. He actually did help a lot of other people in this anime, and I honestly did feel like he was a really great character. To me personally, he was basically like the character like Sasuke or something else. Like, he wasn't really like Nora until the big happy or, you know, like many other characters you would see like as rivals, one that's goofy, weak, but gets stronger. This one, I really never watched any anime like this before, and I really must admit, I really found it entertaining a lot. I love how Sebastian really loved using kitchen utensils as weapons and everything, using knives and forks and spoons silvery, and he was really good at it. He was really entertaining. He granted, at the beginning of this anime, it did kind of look weird and everything, I was kind of like, what am I watching? But as it goes on, it actually got more interesting. And believe me, when you're in the last final episode, things get really interesting. Now, personally, the way I would rate this, I would rate this as a 9 out of 10. I did think there were some things I did not like from it. But really, that was only because of what we're going to be at next. If any of you guys want me to talk about more about Season 2, 3 in the movie, I will reveal those in a later point of time. But until then, though, this is Jumping Game 44 signing out. Until then, I'll see you all later. Bye.